What's up everyone? I'm back with the year in wrestling series of of my videos. This is 1991 part 1 of the year in wrestling. I will be talking about WCW and WWF only. And I'm going to kick it off talking about the first pay-per-view of the year from the WWF Royal Rumble 91 held in Miami, uh, the Miami Arena in Miami, Florida. First match to kick off the pay-per-view was a hot crowd. It really got the crowd into the, to start the show, got the crowd into the show, and they were really into this match. The Rockers, the Rockers, Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty, great tag team back in the day. Had a lot of energy, did a lot of cool tag team moves, double team moves. They were an awesome team. The Rockers defeated the Orient Express to kick off Royal Rumble 91. Up next you had the Big Boss Man defeat the Barbarian. And then a pretty boring match. Both guys were big guys. Uh, it was pretty boring. Nothing against Big Boss Man. I was a fan of his. He was awesome. Nothing against Barbarian. He's a really tough man. He would kick my ass. But, yeah, the match, Boss Man versus Barbarian, did not work for me. It was boring. <clears throat> Shouldn't have really been on the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Up next, a match. That should have not at all been on the pay-per-view. The Mountie defeated Coco Beware. And it was really awful. Should have not been on the pay-per-view. Up next, she had a tag team match. Ted DiBiase at the time was feuding with the late great American Dream Dusty Rhodes. They had a feud that started at SummerSlam 90. When Ted DiBiase basically bought... Sapphire, all these gifts. So Sapphire then left Dusty and basically took the money and ran. So into 1991 at the Royal Rumble. It Ted DiBiase and Virgil take on the team of Dusty Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes. And uh, it was a decent tag match. It wasn't great, but it was pretty good and entertaining. Ted DiBiase and Virgil win over Dusty Rhodes and Dustin. Still can't believe Dusty Rhodes is gone. Very sad and tragic that he died at the age of 69. He could have lived much longer, I thought. At least 10 more years. So that's very tragic. When I see Dusty Rhodes' name on a show that he was in it on a show and in this show very sad he's gone I'm, I'm gonna miss Dusty a lot so after Ted DiBiase and Virgil win Ted DiBiase I believe started bossing Virgil around told him to pick up the million dollar belt and give it to Ted DiBiase now he's berating him on the microphone yelling at him uh, basically Treating Virgil like he always treated treated Virgil like he always treated him like a slave. And I'm just telling it like it is. Ted DiBiase treated Virgil, well he was, I don't know what he, I guess he, he was his bodyguard, but he treated him like a butler and like a slave. And Virgil went along with it for the money. Because everybody has a price for the million dollar man. So, Virgil, finally, Ted DiBiase, I believed, turned his back. Virgil picked up the million dollar title, nailed Ted DiBiase with it. Ted DiBiase goes down. Rowdy Piper is on commentary with um, Gorilla Monsoon. That's an odd team to do commentary, but it was the team. Uh, Rowdy Piper basically popped and started yelling, Yeah, there you go, Virgil, that's my boy. So then, basically, Roddy Piper was on Virgil's side and started training him and mentoring him. 
and like almost being his manager when Virgil started wrestling and had his first match at WrestleMania 7. Well, not his first match. He wrestled in the late 80s. But basically his first singles push Virgil was getting was in 91. So Virgil turns on Ted DiBiase. Finally. And that was cool to see. Uh, up next, after that tag match with Ted DiBiase and Dusty Rhodes and Virgil turning on Ted, we had the Royal Rumble match. The winner. First time ever. The winner of this 1991 Royal Rumble went to WrestleMania and got a world title shot. And as everybody knows, Hawk Hogan won the Royal Rumble 91. If you don't know that, that's pathetic. He also won the 1990 Royal Rumble. So Hawk Hogan was uh, the first ever back-to-back -back winner of the Royal Rumbles, 90 and 91. He's the first guy to do it, to win back-to-back -back Rumbles. Shawn Michaels was the second guy. He won 95 and 96. Uh, I'm going to just talk about some thing. And Hawk Hogan eliminated Earthquake to win the 91 Royal Rumble. I'm going to just talk about some stuff I liked in the 91 Royal Rumble. You had guys like the Road Warriors, the Legion of Doom were, were in this Rumble. A very young Undertaker was in this Rumble. Uh, Demolition, Smash, and Crush were in the Rumble. Bret Hart was in the Rumble. Alone. I believe Jim Neidhart was in the, the Rumble also. Uh, Tony Atlas was in this rumble as a stupid god-awful gimmick, I believe it was called Safa Sika, or some dumbass name like that. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan might have been in the rumble, I can't remember. A lot of guys are in it, but basically it was 30 guys, again, 30 man, over the top rope, Royal Rumble, every man was for himself. Uh, Shane Douglas, a very young Shane Douglas, was in the Rumble. He was working part-time with the WWF, and Shane Douglas had a really good showing, I thought, in the 91 Royal Rumble. He probably lasted probably 25 minutes in there, and it was good to see. But then after the Rumble, in future pay-per-views the WWF put on, Shane Douglas was nowhere to be found on those shows. Because I, they let him go. So Shane Douglas, had, I thought he had a great showing. But the WWF decided to not hire him full time. And then in 92, uh, the, later on in 92, he showed up in WCW again. And became a tag team champion with Ricky Steamboat. Also, who had a great showing was Rick Martell, the model. Rick Martel, he had a great, great showing also. He beat uh, Ted DiBiase's record of lasting the longest in the Royal Rumble from 1990. Well, in 91, Rick Martel defeated and became the longest guy ever to be in the Royal Rumble. And he broke the record of Ted DiBiase. I believe it's Ted DiBiase. I was in the Rumble really long in 1990. But uh, Rick Martel in 91, he was in there probably over 40 minutes. I'm pretty sure it was over 40 minutes. He was he looked great. He was like an Iron Man. Uh, he was a great talent. Rick Martel, hell of a talent. And Shane Douglas, he looked pretty damn good in there. As I said, he looked good. And he, he looked like he was going to be a great talent going on in the future. And uh, he was a great talent in ECW. He was, pretty, he was good at promos and he was a pretty good wrestler, but he was injured a lot of the time in ECW. In, the, in 95, he came back when the WWF hired him and they wanted him to be Dean Douglas. That was god-awful fucking shit. That was really bad, really bad. God-awful gimmick. Dean Douglas sucked. Not saying Shane Douglas sucked as a person. Not saying that at all. The character 
the WWF gave him when they gave him Dean Douglas was awful. It was never going to work. Ever. And I don't know why they did that to Shane. They screwed him over big time. So, as I said, Hawk Hogan wins the Royal Rumble. Goes to WrestleMania 7 to get the world title shot. And um, then you had the WWF title on the line. The Ultimate Warrior was defending against the man that turned his back on the U.S. Sergeant Slaughter basically became an Iraq Iraq soldier character. And then he had his manager with him. I believe the guy's name was General Adnod or something like that. That and this guy looked like he was Saddam Hussein's twin. Saddam Hussein's twin walking around with Sergeant Slaughter. That was weird. And I believe before he was with, that guy was with Sergeant Slaughter that looked like Saddam Hussein. I believe he came from the AWA. Anyways, Sergeant Slaughter wins the WWF Championship after Macho King, Macho Man Randy Savage ran down to the ring, did a run-in, had a scepter, smashed it over the head of the Ultimate Warrior. And the Ultimate Warrior basically could not get up. Got pinned. One, two, three. Sergeant Slaughter won the match. Macho Man screwed the Ultimate Warrior out of the title. And then they went on to WrestleMania 7 and had an epic retirement match. That was the Royal Rumble 91. Now I'm going to talk about WCW Clash of the Champions 14. Happened January 30th, 91. A couple of days, probably 11, 12 days right after the Royal Rumble. And they started to show off. And Dusty Rhodes was on the show, on camera, doing commentary with good old J.R. Jim Ross. Very surprising to see Dusty on Clash of Champions 14 when 10, 11 days earlier, or 10, 11 days before Clash of Champions 14, he was on the Royal Rumble. Well, he went back to WCW. I believe he got an offer to go back there, be the head booker run creative and he took it and he was also on commentary for clash of champions 14 and wrestle war 91 and super brawl 91 so first match of clash of champions 14 you had the tag team champions doom to get defeated by disqualification by sting and lex luger sting came out crowd was hot to start to show off crowd always loved sting kids loved him i loved sting at the time i was seven years old sting was a hero of mine so sting and lex luger defeat the tag team champions doom by disqualification television champion i don't believe the title was on the line tv champ the z-man defeated bobby eaton the Freebirds, Michael Hayes and Jimmy Garvin defeated Tommy Rich in some jobber I've never heard of. Terry Taylor beat Ricky Morton. Sid Vicious absolutely destroyed Joey Maggs. Probably was under three minutes. He just destroyed the guy, choke slammed him, power bombed him, put him on a stretcher, and Joey Meggs was sent to the back. And the guy was a jobber. Match was basically to make Sid Vicious look like a monster and look strong, and it worked. Uh, Ranger Ross defeated some guy I've never heard of again, some jobber. Arn Anderson and Barry Windham, the Four Horsemen, defeated the Renegade Warriors. Brian Pillman, Flying Brian, he was at, he was tremendous. He was great. He was awesome as Flying Brian in the early 90s. 
The guy could do anything. He could have a great match with anybody. Brian Pillman was great. Brian Pillman defeated Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker. Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker, former head trainer at the WCW Power Plant. And this is what I think of Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker. The guy should never, ever been in the wrestling business. He sucked. Missy Hyatt defeated Paulie dangerously in an arm wrestling match. Missy came out. She looked damn good, I thought. Clash of Champions 14. Sometimes I don't think she always looked good. When she had her hair curled and her hair was basically sticking out like she was living in the 80s. And it was curled and she didn't look good then. But her hair was straightened and... She, her face looked damn good. And she had nice, she had a nice rack. But anyways, she had a zipper up jacket going into the arm wrestling match. She zipped it off, took it off, and basically her tits were ha hanging out, sticking out of her top, almost falling out of her top. Polly was staring at him like, just staring at him, and then Missy grabbed his arm. Arm wrestling match started. Missy slammed Polly Dangerously's arm down to win the arm wrestling match. And if you don't know who Polly Dangerously is, that's pathetic. He's Paul Heyman. And you should have knew that if you're a wrestling fan. <clears throat> World title match. Ric Flair was defending the title against Scott Steiner. And they wrestled to a draw. Obviously, everybody knew Scott Steiner was not going to beat Ric Flair and win the world title. But it was a good match. It's a good main event. Up next, I'm going to talk about Russell War 91 from WCW. Pa their first pay-per-view of the year was February 24th, 91 from Phoenix, Arizona. First match of the pay-per-view, you had the six-man tag team champions. I don't know why those belts are still around. Uh, champions were Junkyard Dog, Ricky Morton, and Tommy Rich defeated the team of the State Patrol and the Big Cat. That was a, not a good start to Wrestle War 91. That match was boring. Up next, you had Bobby Eaton defeat... Brad Armstrong in an okay, decent match. Up next, you had a, a women's tag team match. Four women from Japan competing. I cannot pronounce their names, so I'm not even going to try. Up next, you had Dustin Rhodes, fresh off his Royal Rumble 91 appearance a month later. He's on his first WCW pay-per-view, making his WCW pay-per-view wrestling debut. Dustin Rhodes defeated Buddy Landell. Uh, Buddy Landell, the nature boy, just passed away. Rest in peace, Buddy Landell. The Young Pistols, the team of Tracy Smothers and Steve Armstrong, I believe is one of the Armstrongs, Steve or Scott Armstrong, was teaming with Tracy Smothers. They were the Young Pistols. They defeated the Royal Family. Who was the Royal Family? I don't have a clue. They sound like jobbers. Terry Taylor defeated Tom Zink, the Z-Man. Stan Hansen and Big Van Vader wrestled to a double disqualification. This match was... I enjoyed it. It was a straight up brawl. And I, I enjoyed that. It was not a wrestling match. I don't think they did one wrestling move. But it doesn't matter. Vader was a, was in his prime. 91, 92, 93 he was in his prime. <clears throat> Even 94 he was still great. Vader came huge. Had a big career in Japan. Came over to WCW. 
Great American Bash 90, and Russell War 91 he was on. He's wearing a mask. I don't know why, but he had a mask on. Not the red mask that he, that everybody knows him for wearing that red mask with whole, all the holes in it that shows his face. This was an old school black wrestling mask. He was wearing it for some reason. And Stan Hansen, I'm a big fan of Vader. Love the guy. He's an all time great, great big man. Hope, hopefully he gets in the Hall of Fame someday. Hopefully in 2016. Stan Hansen, great, great, great guy. Legend. And this was a brawl. And I enjoyed it because it was a brawl. They beat the hell out of each other. It was awesome. Ends in a double DQ. Uh, Stan Hansen also. He should get in the Hall of Fame in 2016. Both Vader and him definitely for sure deserve it. Um, next U.S. Champion Lex Luger defending the U.S. title defeated... Dan Spivey and uh, after the match I believe it was in an interview segment Nikita Koloff was handing Lex Luger the US title and then he turns on him I believe he beat his ass and Nikita Koloff was back to being a heel again so he came back he was gone he was on no pay-per-views for WCW in 89 or 90 why I don't know, but he must have took a break for some reason. So Nikita turns on Lex Luger after Lex Luger defeats Dan Spivey. The Freebirds defeated the NWA Tag Team Champions Doom to win the tag team titles. Freebirds at this time in 1991, they should have not been tag team champions at all. They just shouldn't have been, in my opinion. But they were. Doom, after Doom loses, Butch Reed and Teddy Long, they turn on Ron Simmons, their longtime friend and partner. They turn on him and attack him. And Doom breaks up, and Doom never teamed again as a tag team. After Wrestle War 91, I believe they even had a singles match at the next pay per view Super Brawl. Where it was Ron Simmons versus Butch Reed, I believe, is in a steel cage. So after the Freebirds win their tag team titles, main event was the War Games match. And it was a pretty good War Games. It wasn't great, but it was pretty damn good. Team, the team of first team, Four Horsemen, Ric Flair, Sid Vicious. Barry Windham and substituting for Arn Anderson was Larry Zabisco. Taking on the team of Sting, Brian Pillman, and the Steiner brothers. Uh, to start the match off, I believe is Brian Pillman. Runs in the cage, he's injured, has his shoulder all taped up, he had an injury. Runs in the cage to start the match. He wasn't supposed to, but he did anyway. I believe Barry Windham started it with Brian Pillman. They started going at it. And the finish was Sid Vicious delivers two really vicious looking power bombs on Brian Pillman. Very brutal looking power bombs. Looked like Brian Pillman was injured and got injured for real. It was no work. Maybe Sid just did those power bombs to make it look brutal and look real like he really injured Pillman I don't know if he really injured him but Pillman sold it like he was really hurt and Pillman was awesome great at selling great worker great guy <clears throat> real tragedy that Brian Pillman is gone and no longer with us because if he's around now He'd probably be working in the WWE backstage on a creative team. He had a great mind for the business, and he'd probably be giving a lot to WWE and wrestling. So that's a real shame he's gone. So the, the ref, 
Nick Patrick stops a War Games match because Sid delivers those two vicious power bombs on Brian Pillman. I don't know why you stop a War Games match. It doesn't really make sense because the War Games match there's supposed to be no rules and anything goes. So the ref stopped it. That was kind of stupid, I thought. But it happened. Wrestle War 91 was not a great show. The two highlights for me and the two things I enjoyed only the only two things I enjoyed were Sid or not Sid Vader and Stan Hansen and the main event the War Games match that's all I enjoyed uh, Royal Rumble 91 my opinion was much better than WrestleWar 91 so that ends part one of my video of the year in wrestling 1991. I will talk about, in my next video, part two, I'll talk about WrestleMania 7, Super Brawl 91, the first Super Brawl pay-per-view WCW put on. Uh, I'll talk about Great American Bash 91. And there was a Clash of Champions, I believe in June or July 91. I'll talk about that also. If you watch this video, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. You can uh, follow me on Twitter. I live tweet all the time when wrestling's on. At TNA WWE Guy and at NXT WWE Guy. Have a good Thursday, everybody. Bye for now.